Well, I've been thinking about this one for about a year. I was thinking, oh, I might get out of town. I'm just going for a little drive. Come and see a mate. Check out his setup. Have a look at his cycling collection, his bike portfolio, his quiver, his personal mementos. And then just sort of document a little bit about what he thinks about his bikes. And the mate is Mark Renshaw. Oh, I've got a great story. We were in the Tour de France. Uh, we rode this bike for three years in Credit Agricole, so nothing changed. We were midway into Tour de France. I asked my director, Serge Boucherie, I said, look, is there any chance we can maybe get a 25 uh, cog on the, on the rear? Tomorrow we've got two Category 1 climbs in the stage. Um, and he just looked at me in the hallway and he just said, uh, to change le métier. And he pretty much told me in French, you need to change your job. <laughs> so, halfway into the Tour de France, he's told me I need to change my job because I've asked for a 25 cassette on the rear instead of a 21. Yeah, looking back, that's a pretty good story. So, I'm, I'm glad I didn't change, change le métier and I continued on with uh, cycling and I was able to use a 28 and even a 31 cog on the, on the back of some of my <laughs> wheels in my last year as a pro. So I'm going to take a drive out the Bathurst. He said to me yesterday, oh, it's only about three hours, you should be doing all right, depends on traffic. So I'm in the centre of Sydney, go out to um, Mark Renshaw Central. Uh, I might even, god damn, I haven't even thought about it until right at this minute, but I might even go around old Mount Panorama. I haven't been to Bathurst for over 25 years. I used to go up there occasionally. I'm going back, I have no idea what to expect. I know it's past the Blue Mountains. It's got so many layers to this uh, road trip that I don't even know where to begin. So number one, I'm going to go see Mark, that's going to be cool. Number two, I'm going to see Bathurst, that hopefully could be cool. Number three, I might even do a little bit of like motor racing nostalgia. And I'll spare you my commentary about that because I know absolutely two thirds of bugger all about motor racing. I'm going to get in the car, I'm going to put the bikes on the roof, going to go for a drive. I'm going to sort of do a little bit of thinking. So I'm going to sort of document the day because it could be interesting, or it might not be. And I'll just go out and do some stories of my bike with Mark Renshaw, which will be interesting. As for the Rob Arnold element of it, um, it could go either way. It could be a really full rant day, or it could just be like, nah, not in the mood day. So um, hang out with me. Got any questions, ping them along send a comment and um, you know if you want a bit more racing then just jump back into the channel and have a look at the Kellen O'Brien interview that I did yesterday afternoon. It's not the best connection but it was uh, nice to be able to talk to a bloke who puts on a good show and then later in the week I'll talk to a few other bike riders. I've got a couple of others lined up. Anyway, oh, on the Mark Renshaw topic and longevity and knowing of bike riders. So everyone knows the story of Mark Renshaw, like absolute freak, superstar on the track early in his career, was one of the guys who was part of the quartet that was the second to go under four minutes in the team pursuit in Manchester in 2002 at the Commonwealth Games. I was on the aeroplane at the time coming back from the Tour de France, so I had to get off go through customs and then find out, holy dooly, they break the world record, how cool, how cool is that? So Mark did that. Um, I think he was a kilo junior world champion, so he has a history of uh, short distances, and then he went into a, like an everlasting pro road career. And although he accomplished many things on his own, he's probably best known as the lead out maestro of his generation. Just asked Tor Hushoft and Mark Cavendish and a host of other sprinters who, was, who he's um, led to the line. They'll all go, oh, Mark sure he's a bloody unreal bloke. And he is. So um, what my point is with him is that I remember when I met him, and it was at the velodrome, at the Dungray Velodrome, shortly after the Sydney Olympics. He was only a young pup. And he'd just signed on with the New South Wales Institute of Sport McGee team. So McGee started bringing, Brad McGee that is, started bringing in LaPierre bicycles. These Scandium ones at the time, Scandium frames. 
and he threw a little bit of coin at the New South Wales Institute of Sport and they did a co-sponsorship of this development team that including the li- it included the likes of Mark Renshaw. It was a pretty good crew. Just trying to think who's gone on to bigger and better things. But there was a big list there. Um, anyway, Renshaw was the shining light. And uh, we did an interview way back then. And then as time progressed, he went on to an emphatic pro career. And now he's retired, owns a bike shop in Bathurst, and that's where I'm going. So, yeah, the point is I've known him probably 20 years. It's quite a long time, eh? So, God, I'm old. Actually, I realised that all of that uh, whole a little about me meeting him after Sydney Olympics was rubbish, because I must have met him before then. He was only 17 at the time. Let's go for a drive.